Hello and welcome everyone to the channel. Um, in this we're going to be looking at uh, the M43A1 high explosive light shell used by the 81mm uh, M1 mortar. Uh, what you see in front of uh, me right now uh, is a <clears throat> resin copy. Uh, the reason why I have this is just to show you the overall painted appearance. Uh, the plan uh, of this video is to strip down a deactivated one uh, and show you the parts uh, and give you a little bit of insight into it. So this is the resin version. And here is a genuine deactivated version. So the high explosive light shell uh, named as the M43A1 is a lightweight round provided for fragmentation and blast effect. It consists of a hollow steel body, a fin assembly uh, which screws on the rear end of the body and a super quick point detonating fuse M52 or modification of it which is attached to the front of a shell. A TNT bursting charge weighing 1.23 pounds is contained within the shell body and upon impact is ignited by the booster charge in the fuse base. Uh, the fuse uh, is described in detail uh, later on, uh, but for the meantime, we're gonna just uh, break down uh, the round itself. So first things first, uh, we're going to remove this. And put this to one side. Uh, we're then going to remove the fuse cap. And then the fin assembly. So that's it broken down. You have the fuse component parts here first. Then the main body of the uh, round uh, and Operationally, this would be uh, olive drab uh, with markings in yellow, uh, as seen in this resin version. You then have the uh, fin assembly. So starting with the uh, fin assembly, uh, you can see there is a damaged threaded portion uh, here. It looks like it's been ground down. Uh, I don't know why, um, but it does thread cleanly into the body. Uh, so I'm unsure as to why that's been butchered in that way. 
Uh, on the back, there is a threaded portion for the uh, ignition cartridge. Uh, so that will be uh, either an M3 cartridge uh, or a ignition cartridge uh, with primer um, that screws in here. You can see here that someone's just inserted a little uh, 12 gauge shotgun cartridge. I mean, they're virtually identical. Um, so the propelling charges for the mortar ammunition uh, consist of uh, a primer and ignition cartridge and bundles of sheet powder called propellant increments. A uh, picture of which uh, I will show here. Short and variable ranges result if these increments get wet, therefore you need to protect them from rain and moisture. With most 81mm mortar ammunition, the primer is separate from the ignition cartridge. In some older ammunition, the primer may be part of the ignition cartridge. Next thing we'll look at is the fuses. Uh, in general, these fuses are classified as bore safe. Uh, that is, that they are fitted with safety devices by which the explosive train is so interrupted that before firing, and while the projectile is still in the barrel of the mortar, premature action of the bursting charge is prevented should any or of the more sensitive elements, the primer or detonator, function improperly. Uh, so I will put up a diagram here of, of the fuse. Uh, to start from your top, you have a striker. And as you can see, it's sprung loaded. So inside the body of this uh, is a spring. And as you can see here, uh, it plunges the pin uh, down. This is the uh, firing pin uh, that will go down uh, and in to this main body uh, here. Um, as you'll see in the picture that I just put up on the screen, you will have uh, the slider spring, uh, the primer, the slider detonator, safety pin spring, safety pin, setback pin, safety wire, setback pin spring, uh, slider and booster lead and booster charge. Uh, as this is deactivated, you don't have any of that. Um, you do, having said that, you do have uh, a severed, uh, which I believe is the safety pin. Um, and this cover here. Um, I'm not gonna try and break down uh, this part anymore because all that's inside it is a spring uh, and that's it um, and you can see it's made out of a, uh, a non ferrous metal that these parts are attached to. A safety wire passes through the body of the fuse and the setback pin locking all movable parts in their original safe position. Pull the safety wire just before firing. The safety wire is designed to lock the setback pin in place during normal handling of the round before firing. The setback pin held in place by the safety wire in turn locks the safety pin in position. The setback pin is supported by a spring and is positioned in a recess of the safety pin. Until the setback pin moves out of this recess, the safety pin is locked in the fused body. The safety pin held in place by the setback pin is the main locking device of the fuse. It holds the slider, which contains the primer and detonator, in its offset position and prevents premature alignment of the various elements of the powder train. The fuse is not armed until the primer and slider detonator are aligned with the firing pin and booster lead. The first step in the arming of the fuse is the removal of the safety wire before firing. 
The shell, when inserted in the barrel, slides down until the primer of the ignition cartridges strike the firing pin. The combined forces of the shell striking the inside of the base cap and the blow delivered to the shell by the gases of the propelling charge cause the inertia of the setback pin to overcome the resistance of the setback pin spring and permits the setback pin to move toward the base of the fuse. This movement withdraws the shank of the setback pin from the recess of the safety pin. The safety pin now being released by the setback pin is thrown outward by the action of the safety pin spring, but is prevented from leaving the fuse by striking and bearing against the bore. At this time, the safety pin has not moved far enough to disengage the slider and the slider remains locked in its unarmed position. When the shell leaves the muzzle and the safety pin no longer rides against the bore, the pin and spring fly out of the fuse, thereby releasing the slider. Under the action of the slider spring, the slider is forced at the opposite end of its chamber. The slider locking pin is pressed upward by its spring and is guided by a groove in the lower surface of the slider towards a small hole in the bottom of the slider. The spring forces a slider locking pin into the hole, locking the slider in position and completing the alignment of the powder train. At this time, the fuse is completely armed. Moving the fuse assembly away, we go to the body. Uh, and this particular um, body uh, is unpainted. And if you look, it's flaking um, some plating off. So I imagine this is a, a demonstration uh, mortar shell, uh, maybe a display piece rather than anything more than that. Uh, but it's the same as uh, a fully functioning uh, one. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get in, get a good video of inside, but your all it is is just a hollow, empty case uh, that the explosives uh, would be put into. Uh, reassembly is the reverse of the disassembly, um, so we'll start off with screwing the fin assembly in and as I've already mentioned you can see although the threads damaged it does go in and then like I say the the firing cartridge uh, would be inserted And then in regards to the firing in the fuse, that screws back in. This little brass. Fitting goes back in there. And then here, this as you'll see in the diagram, it, it would be a lot longer uh, and form uh, part of a more complex mechanism uh, and would go into there like so. Um, and then utilising the hole. So, uh, and this keeps falling out because obviously it's originally it was because it's deactivated it was bonded in there with some resin um, but I removed the resin 
so if we just take that to the other side and then we screw the fuse back in and that completes the round like i say operationally it would look like this uh, excuse the difference in the uh, fins and that's it so i hope this little breakdown uh, and a little bit of explanation of uh, what cartridges are used uh, and how the um, firing pin uh, and fuse works uh, along with what's contained within the body of this uh, shell the m43a1 uh, i hope it was of some use to you uh, thanks for watching everything that i've just gone through uh, with you in regards to this shell uh, comes from this uh, 81 millimeter m1 mortar uh, field manual uh, it has a vast amount of information in it for you to be completely and utterly literate in the use of the 81 uh, mortar um, it ranges from its setup to the ammunition used uh, as and when I'll upload uh, more videos uh, describing uh, the processes of the various pieces of equipment this section here is the uh, ammunition section uh, and you can see we have the M43 a1 diagram a breakdown of all the other shells that we used information on the fin assembly the cartridges used etc so i hope this was uh, of some use thanks for watching